Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on the shortest day of the year, December 22nd, Sunday, at 1 p.m. Mountain Time 2019. The new models are in, and they're showing a white Christmas for the West. As far down as southern Arizona into Mexico, and then that Midwestern blizzard we promised you over a week ago is developing to cut straight through Kansas. And that's going to happen right after the Christmas holiday on Friday, December 27th through Saturday the 28th. That heavy snow will move through central Kansas. But not before over 18 inches of snow falls in the Sierras in the next 24 to 48 hours. Keep calm. It's boom time. Storm to bring rain to Bay Area, snow to the Sierras with more bad weather on Christmas Eve. Beautiful picture. A cold weather system is expected to bring moderate rainfall to the Bay Area. Several inches of snow in the Sierras. Strong winds and lower temperatures ahead of Christmas. Several inches. We're going to check the models. Snow levels may even drop to the level of the I-5 freeway over the Grapevine on Monday night. Heads up. Santa Clarita. Palmdale. Riverside. It may snow in L.A., in other words. Seattle experienced its gloomiest day since records began, which wasn't that long ago for these records, by the way. But clouds cover the sky while it rains as a seaplane approaches Lake Union. Take a look at that gloom. Saturday night might be the winter solstice, but the darkest day in recorded history was Friday in Seattle. According to the University of Washington atmospheric scientist Professor Cliff Mass, December 20th, 2019, was the darkest day ever recorded in the 20 years since the school has been recording solar radiation on the roof of one of its atmospheric science buildings. Mass said they measured just 0.37 million joules of solar radiation, beating the previous record low of 0.39 million joules back in 2006. The reasons are obvious. You are here. The second lowest reading was back here. So, clearly, you've been following the channel. You know that when we drop down in solar activity, cosmic rays increase, as do flooding activities. And the deeper we go, the more biblical they will become. This includes snow events. So, more doom and gloom is coming to Seattle. Rain and snow expected over the Christmas weekend in southern Nevada. That's awesome. I wonder if Las Vegas will get hit. Pineapple Express brings heavy rain to the northwest while Gulf Storm heads for the southeast. Heads up, southeast. Lightning, tornadoes. Snowfall analysis from the last 48 hours showing the big winter is northwest Montana with 36 inches falling as well as some areas with over five feet up here north of Seattle. And that snow is going to continue to rain down. Let's check the models. We'll walk you through it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day after Christmas. We're having a white Christmas here. Look, Watch Colorado light up Christmas Day. Oh, yay. And there's your weekend, Saturday through Sunday. Should be a fun day here in central Kansas. Do not go out. Be prepared. Have supplies ready for power outages, central Kansas. Are you listening? And then as we usher in the new year, We have a southern system coming in the first week of January through the nexus of the Schmexus of the central Texas. Louisiana doesn't look left out. We'll be watching it closely. We hope you all have a happy and safe holiday, especially central Kansas. Heavy rainfall and flooding in the southeast continued unsettled for the west coast. Let me show you my ugly mug. Heavy rainfall will continue over much of the southeast, especially the coastal Georgia and southern South Carolina regions. Through Monday, with the risk of flooding, a few severe thunderstorms may also affect South Florida. Elsewhere, periods of rain and heavy mountain snow will persist from California northward to Washington State over the next several days. Mild weather will prevail from the Midwest to the Northeast. And it was just cold there, so you guys better be happy. Really ridiculous. Environment Canada says Friday, British Columbia snowfall brought rare intensity. Take a look at the picture. Very low visibility. Cam loops. A veteran forecaster with Environment Canada says the intensity of the system dumping snow over British Columbia interior may come once a year. It also may come once a decade. We also may have some, well, anyway.
that's where we're at. I've been doing this business for 30 some years and I remember this kind of thing happening, Dub Lundquist told CFJC today. It might not be every year or maybe once a year to have it set up like that. They're trying to explain what's going on as storm dumps up to 80 centimeters of snow on Banff. It, was, it even cut off three highways. People were stuck. And this is going to be happening more and more as because today is the first day of winter. <laughs> we have a lot to report on. Almost a meter of snow has fallen on sections of the Coquihilla Highway. And that's bad news up there in British Columbia. Dreaming of a white Christmas, 10 to 20 centimeters forecast for most of Newfoundland. So be safe up there. Now, climate change could make us dumber, literally, according to this article from BGR, which apparently is not a very smart periodical. And Mike Winner is one of the dumber people um, sucking the CO2 narrative. And if you just read it, it's full of propaganda and no information. Now, new research shows that as the human-caused climate crisis worsens, Every single word there is word smithery. Human caused climate crisis. There is a human caused pollution crisis, but it has nothing to do with plant food. One of the symptoms is our increasingly sick planet may be dumber and dumber humans. Yes, Mike, we're well aware. We're reading one of those. I know what you're thinking. It probably isn't going to end well. Now, this article which, by the way, is, you know what it is, is coming from uh, this publication here, Higher Carbon Dioxide Levels Could Muddle Our Thinking According to Physics.org, which, again, we've pointed out how stupid Physics.org is. So as the man-made propaganda climate change problem continues to be perpetrated, universities and even Physics.org becomes dumber and dumber as they publish the dumbest non-scientific information so that you can gobble it up. Higher carbon dioxide levels could muddle our thinking. Now, I'm pretty sure that in about five seconds, you could do some research and find out what are carbon dioxide levels normally on the planet. And they're claiming that we passed 410 parts per million and we're all going to burn up. Well, I have news for you. Carbon dioxide, a byproduct of combustion, as well as the result of metabolic processes in living organisms, including, but not in, uh, exclusive to photosynthesis, uh, occurs all over the planet. But it's a f especially concentrated in our homes. And the average person is breathing a concentration of between 700 and 2,000 parts per million CO2 in their average home. Now, it would take thousands of years for us to increase to those levels on the planet, and they're saying that it's going to make us dumber, as if it's going to happen soon or it even is a probability. But the average house, and there are no ill effects to uh, human functioning until you get above 2,000 parts per million, even if that's true. Because if we were up at that level, the oxygen levels would probably be different as well. Now, here is the average CO2 in a home. And you can see here... It, it starts at around 1,300. It drops down to around 400, which would be ambient, but it spikes up in the 2 and 2,400 range in this house, averaging around 700 parts per million. And this is every house. So if they're what they're saying is true, then everyone is dumb because we're, we're living in environments that are double the normal uh, CO2 concentration on Earth. And they are well aware that CO2 can't rise that rapidly. So even if it goes to 500 parts per million, your house is still going to have four to five times those concentrations. So why aren't they writing papers saying stay out of your house or, or vent CO2 out of your house? I don't know because it's not science. It's disingenuous. It means nothing. This means nothing. Uh, the article that this guy means nothing. It's all propaganda to scare you, to tax you for carbon dioxide, which is plant food by the way. Now, I'll leave you links to all this. So you do your own research. There's the CO2 levels over one day in a standard house. The planet, down here. Apparently, everyone that lives in homes are dumber, according to that information. Seismic update. We have a 5.1 kicking off in Iran. Shallow depth could be some damage there. Here on the southern tip of South America in Argentina, 
5.2 kicking off at 18.5. In the warning zone, uh, shallow quake in Tonga, but no uh, dangerous or major quakes. We do have an uptick here in the Aleutians to the Kamchatka, which could be volcanic in nature and probably is as we come over to Worldwide Volcano News Update, we see that Kluchiskyov, um, one of those Kamchatka volcanoes, did puff to 12,000 feet in the last 24 hours, as well as Shivalush. So we have a double Kamchatka boom in the last 24 hours, as well as an uptick in Strombolian activity at Stromboli. And I'm getting hungry. Reventador, Sakurajima, Aso, and Sabankaya also on the list. Nothing spectacular. And we'll be keep watching that. 23 dead as protests grow against India citizenship law. Nine people died Saturday morning during demonstrations against the new law, which critics say de discriminates against Muslims. And this is just a taste of what's going to happen in America when they start taking our guns. Research points to unprecedented and worrying rise in sea levels. Only if you read the article, it talks about how sea level was much lower in the past. Nothing about rising. Again, more shark coming from physics.org, the disinformation specialist on the planet. When it comes to science, if you want to unscience yourself, head over to physics.org. Timing of quaternary geomagnetic reversals and excursions in volcanic and sedimentary archives. Someone has put the pieces together, and I've requ requested all the graphs. So we're going to be waiting on these, and we're going to be giving you an awesome update on everything we know in the entire world of science when it comes to geomagnetic reversals and excursions and their effects on volcanoes, yeah, and extinctions. So stay tuned for that. And we'll get to that in a minute. But Earth's magnetic pole is skittering widely across the Arctic, wildly. And we've been covering it over at Magnetic Reversal News. You can even see my... I got two heaters on, you can see my breath. Our compasses will point east of true north by 2040, expert says. Well, by 2040, both poles may be almost at the equator, experts say as well. So it's anyone's guess. But one thing is for sure. You're living a magnetic excursion. Things are going to get bad quickly. You have less than a decade to prepare. You may only have a few years before the grid starts to fail. And certain areas on the planet will be kicked back to the Stone Age. You need several years of dry goods, knowledge on how to grow your own food, wild harvest and wild craft, and you need to start now. Thanks to all of our one-time donors, all of our Patreons, everyone that supports this channel by sharing these videos. We can't do it without you, and we need to grow to get this message out. Every single video you share may save a life. Be safe. We love you. Happy shortest day of the year. And that's boom. Be safe.